Hi everyone, I wanted to do a demo of a beginning project for beginning watercolorists. Um, this is going to be our end result, but I want to take you through kind of the steps. This is what I teach a lot of my new students. We've massed all these flowers, just really simple daisies, and we're going to start out with a wet on wet wash. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. Now I'm going to start with my Indian yellow, which is my lightest color. And I'm going to put this up here. Make sure it's dark enough, because remember, watercolor dries lighter. I love blues, so I'm going to switch over to my Prussian blue. I'm just going to put a little bit down here on the bottom. Kind of starting from below the tape and going up, I want these kind of grass-like organic strokes going on. Alright, so you get your base color on. You have a lot of water there. Get your base color on. Now you can start deepening a little bit. So my water to pigment ratio is going to be a little bit deeper now. I really want this kind of soft, grassy kind of look. All right, I'm switching over from my number 12 to a number six. Now I'm gonna start doing a heavier mixture of the blue. You want your grass strips to kind of go in all different directions. You don't want them to be straight up and down. Put in a little bit of Viridian green. Now I'm not liking that this is very one dimensional down here, so I think I'm going to grab up some more yellow. Put a little bit more yellow down here. Just for a little bit more contrast. Now I'm really going to deepen my, maybe bring in a little bit of Payne's Gray for some really darker grass look. But see how, because the page is really wet, it just softens up in the background and gives you that nice, soft look to it back there. All right. That's pretty good. That's going to dry pretty well. Um, what I like to do at the very end is splatter a little bit of yellow down here in the bottom. So I have my brush, and I'm just going to hit it like this. You see it kind of splatters a little bit. Very, very end, I'm going to take my salt shaker, my fat cat, and sprinkle just a little bit of salt down here. We'll see how that does. Not too, too much. You just want a little bit. Okay, that's the first step. We're going to let this dry and then I'll go over the next step with y'all. At this point, after the painting is completely dry, you're going to want to remove the masking fluid with your finger or with an eraser. Okay, taking all my masking fluid off, and hopefully if you've laid your masking fluid on neatly, you'll have a pretty good relief kind of thing going on here. I wasn't that neat with this one, so I'm gonna have to work on that one a little bit. Let me show you how to do the centers. So I have my Indian yellow and my burnt umber over here, and for the center, I wanna take clean water and just wet that center there. Lay that yellow on. Kind of always leave a little white part there. I'm going to grab up my burnt umber and I want kind of a thick, thicker mixture of the burnt umber so it doesn't um, spread that much. I'm just going to touch that around the underside, gives it a little bit of depth to the underside of that petal there. I'm going to do a couple of these and then clean water again and then I'll come around to the center again and I'll kind of soften out the edges to give it that impressionistic kind of look. Well, this is still wet. I've put clean water on my brush 
And then in a couple areas, I'm just gonna touch those edges so they kind of fade out into the flower a little bit. I don't know if that's hard to see. touching those edges just here and there not a lot but I didn't want I don't want the middle to be this kind of really harsh circle um, in the middle so I'm gonna do all of my middles and then I'll show you how to put a little bit of color into the petals okay we've got our centers all done now one thing I want to remind you of is you really need to make sure the centers are all completely dry and I went over mine with the hair dryer just to make sure they were completely dry. Right now the flowers kind of look like white blobs. So um, what I'm going to have you do is a, a technique called softening. So we're going to soften lines. We're going to have a really, really watered down gray blue color. It has to be very light. And some of these edges where the petals kind of overlap, I put a little bit of paint on. And I'm going to soften that down with some water. It's really just the slightest hint of color um, and it just kind of delineates the lines and kind of gives the impression that there's some shadows in the petal. I'm just taking clean water and softening those lines down a little bit. Um, there's actually a lot of blue in white. Paint that little line there. Take clean water, and I'm kind of going from outside in and touching that line, softening it down. You can soften both sides, actually. Um, you don't have to do every single petal this way, just some of the petals that you want to. You want to be careful, you don't want to paint the whole petal blue. I'm going to do that with all my petals. Hopefully I can fix this funny little guy. And, um, and then I'll show you what to do at the very end. Okay, to finish up our little project, I've put all of the blue in the petals that I wanted to put in there. Um, this little guy is a little bit overworked. Um, I wanted to finish off by just doing some wet on dry grass strokes here. I think that the, the salt did really well here. If you see that pattern there, it's really pretty. And it's just kind of free and loose. Now, at the very end here, um, I'm gonna splatter a little bit more, but I don't wanna get anything on my daisies. So I usually grab a tissue to cover them up. Like this. Grab up some more color. Do a little bit more splattering. a little bit if you wanted to and it looks like we are done the last thing you need to do is just put your put your signature down there and I think that this will be a successful prod project for beginning watercolors to do let me turn this and see if you can <laughs> it's easily reproducible you can practice it a few times um, you learn a lot of things in this one short little piece of work and it's beautiful and in the end you can frame it. So I hope you've learned a lot and enjoy.